Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. If you're familiar with this channel uh, or with my Twitter or Discord, you'll know that I got a bunch of Japanese consoles shipped from Bai in Japan a while back, and among them was this PC Engine Core Graphics 2, which I think they're all the same. I don't think there's any difference between all of these models apart from. This one doesn't have the RF output, but it's got an AV output instead. And uh, just to show you the back, because some of you like this and you know about serial numbers and things, but that's that's what I got. And uh, it didn't come just the console on its own. It also came with a copy of this. Um, no idea what that is. Um, who knows? It's been speculated that it could be an educational title or a shoot 'em up or some sort of RGB that will be almost impossible to get into owing to it being entirely in Japanese. Also, it came with this, the NEC P1PD001 controller. It doesn't have the turbo fighters, uh, turbo, <laughs> turbo fighter. No, it doesn't have the turbo fire buttons, um, but you know, cool, it's original. All of these things seem to be insanely expensive on um, UK eBay, at least. I don't know in your region if they're expensive PC engine stuff. So I was like, great. This is amazing. Let's put aside the game cubes for a minute and we'll have a look at the PC Engine. So I wanted to plug it into my TV. Two things uh, I couldn't do, actually. First, I couldn't power it on. So I had to order a power supply, which also arrived. This all kind of arrived yesterday. Um, and I put a label on it. You know why? It is um, positive on the outside. So it's center negative on these. Um, so if you plug this into virtually anything else, I think apart from a Mega Drive, I think a Mega Drive might be that. Anyway, don't do plug it into a Mega Drive just in case it's not. Um, it'll blow it up. So really annoying, to be honest. I was almost tempted to open this up and put a full wave bridge rectifier inside here so that it would, well, no matter what you plug in, it would work, but forget it. That's what we got. Um, and uh, I ordered this because um, I looked these up on eBay and they were pretty cheap. To, I say pretty cheap. They're pretty expensive for what they are, but then they have a bunch of connectors. These are about £17 or so. Uh, and the reason I, it attracted to me, it was attractive to me, was because I already have a Mega Drive 2 plug that will fit in there. And you're like, well, why aren't you using the AV port on the side? It's really simple and you probably, looking around, probably have those DINs because you are using DINs like that on your um, Russian, your Soviet ZX Spectrum clone. And I'll, I'll go, yeah. But these have stereo sound, but composite out. Composite, and I'm all about the RGB. Um, and that's what this gives you. It gives you um, red, green, blue, audio. See, RGB, audio, audio. And what would that be? Uh, sync? maybe yeah vertical sync so there you go or just plug in that and you get it all on a lovely scart now this leads me on to the next part of my little exploration because that was great so i whopped this in booyah plugged in the power fettled i almost swore there fettled with this to get it in because it's not great and eventually i did get it in and it loosened up a bit but that is poo, isn't it? You cannot run your core core to graphics PC engine with a dobbly wobbly like that, where you've got not only all the exposed uh, connectors here, so you might accidentally drop a spoon or something and blow it up, um, but also it actually does have power out here. Like legitimately, it's powering this circuit. I, I almost, just almost made my own circuit, which I'm kind of considering making a version of this without all of these bloody ports, where I actually put a power regulator on here so you can plug the power in the back and use any power supply. So it would have a rectifier on it and give five volts to the PC engine up its bottom here. Um, anyway, I digest. So last night uh, I did a live stream. It was uh, just a touch under two hours where I'm again learning how to use Fusion and I made this and this is what we're going to talk about today. That was a really amazing segue wasn't it? It's like five minutes before we actually get to the meat. Now, it's all meat to be honest. I'm all meat. All about the meat. And this um, was the result of that session. Um, and it was really cool. I haven't used that software much, uh, 
Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, but yeah, you get, get it. You get to have a demo copy or a free copy, perhaps, if you're lucky. And um, you can make these things with it. So let me show you what I conceptualized. Um, it was just a box. <laughs> okay, nothing too fancy. It's just a box that you 3D print, and this goes in. But I'll show you how it goes in. It's quite neat. So I've made this switch extension too. So I hold that there, push that, push that in there. And it goes in at this angle, so you just put it in at an angle like that. You can see it's, hmm, what, 45 degrees maybe? And you wiggle it a bit, and then you just don't be careful with this switch because you don't want to force that down uh, onto where there's not a hole. But then you align it to where there's a hole, and boom, it's in the box, in the box. And then there's a lid, which I, I kind of, <laughs> I ground this off uh, because I... I thought, oh no, I don't need a lip there, it won't go in with all these. And I realised, yeah, I designed it, that's the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, and uh, that's what it looks like. And you switchy, 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 switchy. And you plug that in the back. It's a little bit, uh, you can see it's a bit rattly. Um, because I've, one, I've not bonded it in. And two, there's no internal features. But I'll show you how I got around that. So that plugs in. And I tested it. And it was good. And you can see it's okay, but there's not... S you can see it was a bit wobbly. And two, it's a bit too tall. And it's not very cool looking. So I uh, made a version two. And that version two just finished printing. It took nine hours. It's been going all morning. And I've been like, oh, I say all morning. It's been going all bloody day. And um, I thought, oh, okay. Let's, let's have a go then, shall we? And you get to experience it with me. Because what I've done, and you can see perhaps that my hands are wounded. Because I was really... Uh, I was I was whittling at it with a, with a knife, and um, I've scratched myself. Not on the knife, fortunately, but just on the swarfy bits. Look, there's cuts everywhere on me, because I was so keen. I didn't, you know, I just wanted to get in there. I should have used proper tools, but no. Got a dirty, rusty screwdriver, and I skagged it all up and got it off the uh, various flash. Um, but you can see already, it's a way cooler looking box. It's um, This is basically the sport, sporty version of the box. It's uh, slightly shallower. You can see it's, it's a little bit shallower. It's got a lovely uh, lovely grill on there. Um, I might have gone a little bit too naughty there. There's a little bit of a nicked edge there. Let's pretend we didn't see that. I could have, I could have 3D printed out another one so you'd never know, but um, I didn't. I'm too lazy. Nine hours. You need the video today anyway. Look at that. Look at this lovely feature here. There's some lovely curves in here now to really aid the insertion of that board. And then I'm going to show you the base. Started to add some additional board little shelfy standoffs thing. Um, and then look at the look at the detailing on that sporty grill. Mm. Uh, what I did, I actually measured. I actually measured the ones on the PC engine. And you can see I'm meeting them all up. I could have put a small chamfer on here just because they do have that on the edge. And I thought, no, nah, that's my touch, that is. That is my touch. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. When you print these out, when people clone these, I'll know that was, oh, that was my design. We designed that together online. So I'm going to push that through. Now, it could do, with all designs, you could just keep refining it and adding and adding. But the cycle time right now is to the point where... I don't think I care enough about this to want to improve the design anymore. I think I can finish it. You can see it's a little bit rattly. I'm not so happy about that because um, it's it's kind of one of these things, really. It's 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 a semi-interference fit. These boards may come in different dimensions. You've got to be really careful with it. Um, it's got the tolerances to allow it to work pretty well whichever way you've got it. Oh, look at that switch. Look at that switch. See how that interfaces to the switch. Nice. And what's that? That's RCA Mega Drive. RCA Mega Drive. So basically, though, what you do want is to push it back till it's touching those. And uh, you've, got, you've got plenty of room, actually, if you want to pad it or, or something. But uh, I'd advise just take something like maybe a bit of the uh, various support material and if you if you just push this down between these two RCAs at the front if it'll fit yes it will just like that there you go it's locked in <laughs> the switch is making a bit of a rattle but everything else is pretty much there um, and then you could just decide really if you think you need something in there put something in there 
that's absolutely fine. And then you've got the lid, and the lid goes, you see there's a cutaway here, that goes towards the front, I should zoom out a bit really, it's not, it's all the, it's all the angles here, and it just fits nicely like that. Again, it's up to you if you want to just clip it on like that, or you want to put a bit of glue on it. I, I reckon I would just um, hot glue this. Once I'm done and it's all centralized where I want, there's that bit that's a bit disappointing. Maybe I'll, I might fill and paint this, I don't know. No, I probably won't bother. And then you can see that's the switch. Switch goes on, switch goes off, switch goes on, switch goes off. Um, and we'll plug that in. So you really get to see a good look at it. So you can see how that PCB is lining up in there. Just be a bit careful again, it's, it's, it's not quite the right connector. So it doesn't have all of the same support, but it does go in, you know, eventually. And look there. It's still not quite right, but to be honest, it's pretty close because you do have feet on here. And when you sit it on the bench, you can see, it's all right, it's all right. But it's gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that, those lines. I'm gonna get this dirty one out of the way. <laughs> I'm gonna post that. that. Someone's getting that in the post. You get the first one. You can, you can do what you want with that. But I get the lovely, lovely, lovely one. Um, and if you look at the top, by the way, it's slightly kicked more to the left than to the right. Um, again, that's because of this port location. Um, maybe in a future model, I'd bring it out like a couple of mil, but it, oh, how much time? How much time is really worth investing in that? I mean, I, I think we're there, don't you? Really, guys? I think we're there. Um, I think that's doesn't look that nice there because you can see that oh I should make it make it more curvy match no stop it stop stop testing me <laughs> so there you go tell me what you think down below uh, I've included the thingiverse uh, location for all my designs including these and you can go and make it yourself but look at that it's so futuristic it is a gorgeous console I have to admit um, NEC did get it right with this didn't they they did get it right so there, let me know how you get on with it. Come chat to me in my Discord, like, share, subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thanks for watching.